Hey guys, RC here back with episode eight, Football Manager 21, our journeyman save. We're with our fourth club, Levante. We've just finished our first season at the helm in the Spanish first division, and it went pretty well, I would dare say. Uh, don't forget, hit that like button for me, subscribe for daily Football Manager content, and as always, I appreciate you guys that do drop by and hang out with me. Uh, let's take a look at the end of the season review. We'll start off with new arrivals, people coming in. Uh, Antonio Miguel Illamarindi, our signing of the season. That might be the first A grade I've ever seen on a player. So I watch Lelujo, I watch uh, Aussie Villain, I watch Loki Doki. I don't think I've ever seen anybody get an A, and I know I've never gotten an A grade uh, for a signing. Uh, ten and a half million dollars. They are happy with that. Twenty goals, four assists in twenty-one appearances. I'd say that was money well spent. Uh, Patrick Nanzik Nass, twenty-two-year-old attacking midfielder, eight point two five million. Twenty-two starts, five goals, eleven assists, and a seven oh four rating. And by God, we got an A on him too. Stefan Pernan, we got an A, and I don't like him very much. Uh, 38 starts, no goals scored. He sucks. He is a goalkeeper. Uh, seven and a quarter million. Uh, Tomas Fazekas, 21 year old center back. We got a B plus. He's been out on loan all season. And the rest of these guys are all young players that have not uh, made their mark for the club yet. Looking at the transfers out, George Romero, 20 year old center back. Uh, we pick up $1.7 million for him. Julian Prieto, 22 years old, $6.5 million, C-plus grade, um, and we made a pretty big loss on him. But, you know, sometimes you got to do that. Salvador Galan, a 22-year-old winger, B-minus grade, $6.25 million. Uh, Trent Edwards, a goalkeeper. Gaetan Peltier, 31-year-old winger. Uh, we got a C grade, three point eight million for him, nine hundred seventy five thousand for Daniel De La Cruz, and four hundred twenty five thousand for Mario Diaz. We actually got an A minus grade. Uh, they liked getting his salary off the books. Anything else? We had a player exchange here. Mm. Uh, Jose Carlos, four hundred fifty thousand. We got an A grade there, mostly with his salary. So that is the season there. We were supposed to avoid relegation. We finished second in the table, the highest finish for the club ever in this division. 92% home attendance, 23 goals uh, for Gonzalez was the competition top score. We got an A-plus grade, so that was excellent. In the Spanish Cup, we were supposed to reach the fourth round. At a minimum, we reached the fifth round. 92% attendance there. Three goals for Gonzalez in the cup and a C plus grade there. Losing to Real Madrid after uh, four clean sheets consecutively to start the competition. There's your high points. Goal of the season was Enrique. Uh, three star reputation. Again, I think most of this will update a little bit later. I don't know why it doesn't update here, but whatever. Uh, we went up uh, about $300,000 in sponsorship. Broadcast revenue is down about a million. Uh, we were up about $250,000 in corporate. We have not gotten prize money yet. Maybe we don't get prize money because they didn't get any last year either. Wow. No wonder those clubs are in such dire straits in Spain and if they don't get, uh, if they don't get, you know, money. I mean, you know, you you figure picking up thirty five million in the Premier League or something is helpful. If they're not getting anything, that is just so unusual. I guess that puts more oomph into forcing you to qualify for Champions League. My goodness. Uh, and up 400000 on match day. Gonzalez was our top jersey. Ibanez, Segoba, Enrique Garcia rounding that out. 12,355 kits sold. 
There's our starting 11 for the year. Uh, Pernan in goal, Navarro, Fernandez, Kovac, and Garay on the back line. Definitely think we need another center back. Garay, we probably need a, a better right back. Enrique Segoba in the midfield. I'm going to probably try to move Segoba in the offseason. Just he can't defend, and we've got enough other guys that can do what he does passing wise that, you know, we need a better defender in there. Mecca and Ibanez on the wings, Ilamarindi and Gonzalez up top. I was named head coach of the month for March and Spanish League head coach of the year for this season. So kudos to me. Antonio Gonzalez, fan player of the season. Young player of the season was Illa Marindi, as well as the signing of the season. Enrique, as we mentioned, had the goal of the season. Gonzalez, the top goal scorer with 26. Mecca, 15 assists. He just missed the league mark there of 16. Gonzalez, seven player of the matches, uh, also a 7.3 rating. Juan Pablo Santin, 40 passes completed per 90 minutes. And I'm not certain he's in the mix long-term either. Uh, records, Antonio Gonzalez, 26 goals in the league, uh, or most players by most goals by a player in a season. Most goals by a player in a match, Ibanez had a hat trick. Ibanez also had that hat trick, was most goals by a player in a league match. And Roberto Mecca, most assist in a season, 15 for the club record. Our best 11 now brings in three new players. Albi Fernandez on the back line, Antonio Gonzalez up top, and Zabalach Kovac on the back line. Those were the three that step into the starting 11. That is great. So we were considered quiet and leaky on defense and aggressive and clinical offensively. Uh, 1.9 XG per match. We had an XG of 91, scored 97 goals. Uh, X points was 72.2. We ended up on 75. And X points would have had us finish third. We actually finished second. So the green is the first division, and you can see we were uh, conceding more goals. So this is this is defensively uh, score uh, giving up more goals, or is this is this offensively? Uh, oh, conceded. So we're conceding more than the uh, you know we need to give up less goals. All right, uh, let's see club vision and expectations. I don't think there's anything new. Uh, the direct football, they were not happy with. Working within payroll, we're doing all right. Next season, they want a mid-table. Uh, we're also working, remember, on the training and youth facilities. Develop the best youth system in the country. So they need to support me here if that's what they want. Youth class last season was not very good. So they just want us to continue being an established first-team division. We'll accept that. and mid-table this season. All right. So we will tell the boys that mid-table, good reaction. So we've got quite a few positives. We also have quite a few negatives. Uh, good tackling, I agree. Uh, not the best goal uh, group of goalkeepers, I agree. Positioning, I agree. Natural fitness, that can't happen with a Beals aside. They need to be more stamina and everything else. All right, well, they are off. We are going to go, uh, you know what, let's go. At least it's not like just Hong Kong and Beijing and the United States. So let's go, you know what, let's go to France. Because remember, I want to go to France, so I'm, I want to go and expose myself over there and let it not, not, you know, not flash myself with the long black coat, but, you know, just let them know who I am, that, you know, hey, I am actually a football coach. Uh, Illa Marindi finishes second in Spanish League Player of the Year. Not bad, considering he only played half a season in the country. His teammate, Gonzalez, who played the whole season, finishes third. And Gonzalez finishes second in the competition. Top goal scorer, he had 23. Uh, Canizares from Alaves. Uh, had 24 to claim that. I was named head coach of the year. That is great. Gonzalez named into the first team. Navarro 
Martinez and Kovac named to the bench for the Spanish team of the season. That is really good. Team of the year bonus. So he picks up a, uh, a bonus of 43000 So kudos to him. And I will move on now. Uh, I may come back if anything comes Well, I will come back if anything comes up. But we're shooting now for July 1st to take a look at transfers. Okay, we have reached July 1st. We have a lot of transfer business. Not nothing. Not, well, actually, I lie. We don't have much transfer business. But we're just going to catch you up to date. Look at the fan reaction grades. Uh, so uh, we let him go. We got a C-plus grade. Uh, Huesca signed him. We got a decent grade. Uh, two people going there. Uh, Zemo, we got an A-minus gr grade. The fans were really happy to see him hit the curb. And we got a B plus grade on Sanchez going off to Rio. We have finalized five signings. Hector Vasquez, a 23 year old center back. Uh, fans don't like that. He's decent enough. No real upside, but we saw last year, we just really had no quality depth. And I think he gives us some cheap depth that. Can come onto the field. He's got good positioning, good strength, speed. He's got the heading, marking, tackling, jumping reach. He can come in and do a job. And you notice he's listed as an emergency backup. So, you know, he won't play a lot, but there are going to be games where we need bodies and we don't want to have a huge drop off, right? Uh, Giuseppe Corbetta, 22 year old striker, we get a B minus grade on him. And that is the 22-year-old Italian that we signed last season. And I think he looks really good. I'm just not sure where he's going to fit in right now. Uh, Christopher Ketcherelli, 19-year-old center back. We got a C-plus grade on him. He's six foot five, And again, only one and a half star current, three and a half star potential. I think he's got the ability to come in and just do business when we need somebody to step in. And then uh, the only thing since the first bit of the episode that I, I've signed is two goalkeepers. Uh, we ran into that last year. So this guy is a three and a half star potential and he could challenge for the number one shirt uh, right now. And Vassal Honcharuk is Ukrainian, 19 years old, uh, three and a half star, more depth. Uh, that we could maybe send out on loan. But you see, we got B minus grades on both of them, and they were both on freeze. So that is good there. Gianelli does take the number one shirt. Pernan's wearing number 20. I will get everybody welcomed in. And there we go. All right, Antonio Gonzalez. So they've met his 51 million release clause. We're going to reject that one from our former club. But Borussia Magladbach has met the release clause. Now, honestly, as much as I like him, and I do like him a lot, <laughs> uh, 23 goals in my first season, and he has been a prolific goal scorer for the club before. I think if we go in and look at the team report, him and Illa Marindi are number one, but Ibanez is right there, and Corbetta. I think this opens the door for Corbetta to come in and potentially play, depending on where we want Ibanez. And we really need Ibanez on one of the two sides. I'm contemplating right now, because just lack of bodies, putting Ibanez out to the left and putting Nandrick Nass out on the right side, because he did have a good year last year, uh, four goals, eight assists. And that was only in 26 games. So I think maybe giving him a full season there would be good. Garcia doesn't have the crossing. He's more of a true striker and should be depth there. Uh, we have not really been able to address the right and left back situations. Uh, you see uh, Gianelli coming in, competing with Pernan for the number one. Uh, let's see. I want, yeah, let's do that because he's the better judge of talent. So 
Yeah. I'm also looking at players that can play central mid on loan, those fullback left and right backs on loan. Um, we'll see what Gonzalez does. I'm not going to go after another striker. There is a guy on my short list that I did look at, but again, I think I'd rather take that money and maybe go after those other three positions. And Ibanez, oh, that's our young guy, Juan Fran Ibanez. He's one of our youngsters that just came in. Uh, and yeah, we're not going to sell him for less than release clause. Problem is, if we take a look at finances, I've had to adjust my budget, and all of my transfer budget is now in wages. We've actually got to sell some players. So I can't really sign anybody until until we sell anybody. So we'll have to wait and see. Well, there's some interesting news. Their last two coaches have retired from coaching. Uh, so after two years, uh, Marco Santarpia has retired. How old was he, just out of curiosity? 61 years old. All right. And the previous coach who retired, so two years ago, he would have been 67. So six league wins, eight cup wins between them. Look at this guy. 11 leagues and 26 cups over 24 years. That is insane. Uh, I mean, that's... That's got to be right up there. Because remember, this is post real life. This is from when I started the plus 30, right? Because Zidane was there currently, right? Crazy. Uh, anyway, there are, I was looking at the available jobs and I went, I'm Madrid, geez. Um, Juventus is avail available. But nothing in France. Everybody in France seems to be status quo. You ever have that? It seems like whenever I really set my sights on one particular position or job or country, nothing ever comes up there anymore. Let's see. We're going to be in training camp here. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for the start of preseason and schedules to pop up. So. Um, Nothing new on the transfer front, so we've got 75 days till Champions League group stage starts up, so we'll be back when anything happens. Well, I'm torn here because Gonzalez has rejected a contract from Borussia Magladbach after they met his release clause, and we could use the money, but we could use the player too, but I don't have any money to sign anybody in our positions of need unless I sell somebody. So I'm, 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 I'm in a rut here. Just, you know, not sure which way I want that to go rea in reality. Uh, I think we have the ability to give up a striker and he would be the one I would prefer to go. I think out of our top two, he doesn't want to leave. So right now we're stuck with status quo. All right, I wanted to come back and show you this highlight. Martinez plays it up to Illa Mirandi, and it's through to Corbetta, and he puts it in for his first goal for the club. Now, it was a friendly, but it was against Borussia Dortmund, and we beat them 3-2 to two in a shootout. And Corbetta got the start and made it pay off. So I wanted to share that moment with you. All right, we're back to open the season. We are opening against Atletico Bilbao today. Wanted you to take a look at the friendlies. We had some big wins in there. That 3-2 win over Borussia Dortmund, a 2-0 win over Everton, and the 3-1 loss to Barcelona, the only one we struggled in this season. Jumping into transfers since the first. We sold a young player, Juan Fran Ibanez, for $1.1 million. That was his release clause. Brian Romero, we loaned out. And we decided, I finally pulled the trigger on a deal for Segoba. Uh, he goes to Red Bull Salzburg for $11.25 million. He, a very good player, but I'm just looking for a little more defensive posture in the midfield to go along with the playmaking. And he just doesn't have it. And he's only 22. We paid seven and a quarter for him. So we make $5 million. 
and I am happy with that deal. Uh, we did bring in St- Stephen Robinson from West Ham on loan at left back. Uh, he's supposed to be a regular starter. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but that is the only move right now. Uh, we do have a couple of pending deals. Uh, George Louise will be joining us midseason. He is a center back and uh, not not bad. Again, just looking for more quality depth. Got him for a reasonable price. And um, Alex Santos, those are, I think that's an outgoing offer. Yep. And then uh, Francis K- Kimisoko, uh, we've made a $4 million offer on him. He can play left back and center back, 6'4. And I think he would be a good partnership with Kovac in the middle and allow allow Fernandez to move to the right wing uh right wing back position and I think that strengthen strengthens us all around. So uh anyway, let's get into today's match. I guess before we do that, we should check the uh preseason season preview. So we're picked to finish 13th. The club does want us to finish top half. So 10th or higher. So we'll give that a run. Real Madrid, the favorites, odds on. Barcelona, four four to one. Uh, and they should run away with the league, according to the gamblers in Vegas. If we take a look at our team report and depth chart. So let's take out the B team. So Torreno, Pernan, Gianelli in goal. Uh, Garay, Navarro, Robinson at left back. Over at right back, Kovac, Garay, Fernandez, Martinez, Guerrero. Got quite a few guys there. Uh, Kovac, Fernandez, Guerrero, Navarro in the mid there in the center back position. Enrique Santin, who we're trying to sell him. Nanzik Nas, Adria, who will probably get a lot of starts, uh, along with Anaki Martinez, who started down the stretch last year. That's uh, looking to be our midfield partnership. Ivanez is still out with an injury, uh, so we will be missing him for probably another month or so. Uh, Garcia and Mesa, um, Mesa on the outside left. Uh, Garcia, Santin, Nanzik, Nass on the right. And that leaves Gonzalez, Ilamarindi, and um, mostly it's going to be Corbetta uh, filling that number three spot. Garcia is going to be more to the wings, as is Ibanez, and Enrique's in the center mid. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. I'm going to give Gianelli his debut today. Uh, Him and Pernan are going to just fight it out here at the beginning of the season, and we'll see who just gets to the better spot. Uh, I'm probably going to let them each play two or three games at a stretch and then rotate them for two or three games, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, back four, we're going to go with Navarro, Fernandez, Kovac, and Garay, very, all of what we did last year. We're going to go with Anaki, Martinez, and Enrique in the mid. Mecca and Nandrick Nass in the wings. Ila Marindi and Gonzalez up top. And we'll see how this goes. So we have a young keeper making his debut. Everything else is pretty much a carryover from last season. We're opening at home against Bilbao, and hopefully we can carry the torch. Looks like we were about to have a highlight, and I gave a shout, and it cut away. So that was interesting. All right, Bilbao in the white. We're in the blue and red. Some quick movement there in the midfield. Enrique makes a charge up the channel. And blistered in by Nancy Nass. First goal of the season for the club, and it's in the ninth minute, and we take a one to nothing advantage. Got to like the build up to that, and it was a brilliant finish off the right foot of Nandrick Nass, the German youngster. And that has catapulted us up into third position in the table. Really, really liking that. Let's encourage him again. Garay is not uh, not doing good there. Everybody's playing pretty well. Santa Maria now has the highlight near post, and it gets snuck in at the back door. Martin or Martine with the finish, and we are now on level footing in the 35th minute. 
Got to wonder, when you start a new keeper, would Pernan have gotten that one? I'm going to say no. I don't think so. Because he wasn't stellar last year. Oh, there's a chest down by Mecca. And he is into the box. And he sails it up into the stands. And a few jeers from the home crowd. And we are back with another highlight here. Deep in their territory. Oh, they work it around Martin as well. Really breaking us down here. Four on three overload on the right. And that one, wow! Murillo, 25 yards out if that was a foot. Man, what are you going to do with that kind of shot? All right, I am uh, starting to get a little disappointed. We've been the better side on shots. They've had a couple of crackers for a finish. Uh, let's uh, go hands on hips. First half wasn't good enough. We're going to demand more here. Everybody's playing pretty well. We've got a 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Could be better. Oh, there's a steal by Illa Marindi. He is into the box, and he places it past the keeper for his first of the season, and we hope it's the first of many for that striker right there. Remember, he had 20 goals in just half a season last year, and that finish there shows why. The pace to beat the defense, kept it on the out, outer post, made the keeper commit, and then put it home across, and can't do much better than that. And that gets us back. Levante 2, Bill Bow 2. All right, let's go in and do a sub here. Let's bring on Corbetta for his debut. Uh, let's bring... Let's bring Fazekas. No, I don't want to do that. I want to bring Adria on. Let's bring Adria on for Martinez. I really feel a lot better about the midfield this year. They can all play a little bit of defense. Nobody's a standout, right? But, you know, they are much better than what we had for the majority of last season. Oh, and he beat him. Oh, what a save by Gianelli. That was a great save by the young keeper to keep us on even footing. Nunez lines up the corner. It's headed out. Corbetta's on it. Lots of space. Uh, why did he go to ground to try to stay on that ball? That was stupid. All right, well, he got a little heavy with the touch there. Navarro, near post, it's headed in, and it's Kovac, his first of the season. He had, I think, six goals all from set pieces last year, so that was great. Let's go ahead and do a tactical change. We want to do uh, some slow the pace down and play for set pieces. And then I do want to make a subage here. Uh, Mecca for Garcia. Fresh legs on that wing. See if we can hold on here. Navarro. Takes the throw. Adria. Good ball up to Ilamarindi. Garcia into the box. He takes a crack. Forces the save by Exiberia. And we'll take another corner here. It'd be nice to get a, another goal. Navarro puts it near post. It's headed clear. Corbetta cannot get to it. Martin comes back from the midfield area. And we'll be happy if we can hold on to this 3-2 win. Four minutes of stoppage time. Everybody's played pretty well. Navarro with the throw. There's Garcia. Ness crosses it. Garay out to Ness, and he takes a crack at it, but sails it high. 
And you know that's going to buy us a few seconds. They rushed the goal kick. And we're back on the ball. Villa Marindi into the attacking third. Hitting the box, and eh, that's going to be a cheap foul. He's acting like he got clobbered. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but they're going to VAR. He didn't go down, so I'm really surprised VAR made a decision here uh, based on reality. But it's going to be Garcia coming in from the wing to take the penalty to salt this game away, hopefully. And he puts it bottom right, and it's 4-2 Levante. And we're going to take the first three points of the season. Garcia looked really good wearing the number nine jersey there. Good finish. Sends the keeper the wrong way. Put it right in on the post. And that was a brilliant goal. Levante 4, Bilbao 2, 28 shots, 14 on target, 2.7 on the XG. That's a hell of a finish. We're going to be very happy. What a comeback. Inspired and motivated. Corbetta makes his debut, and we are top of the table after one match. Real Madrid has yet to play. Okay. So, you know, let's see. What, what about Barcelona? Barcelona won, but only by a one-goal differential, so we've got the edge there. Now we just have to hold on to it for the whole season. Um, not expecting that. Let's jump in. I don't know when. Uh, let's see. We play Real Madrid in the Super Cup. And Champions League uh, starts in September. So next month, uh, the group stage. And I don't know when they draw the group stage. I have no idea. All right. Well, they're still in qualifying. so. We'll make sure we talk about that when it happens. Corbetta makes his debut. Gianelli made his debut. Uh, let's see. Ooh, we picked up a half a million dollars. Franchek uh, moved from, oh, certain number of league games for Almeria, $500,000. So that's nice. And uh, we finally pay out that $1.7 million to St. Pauli for Ilamarindi. I tell you what, 1.7, that was definitely worth it for scoring the 20 league goals. <laughs> All right, we are going to get, uh, get kind of going into the season here. Uh, I'm going to come back sometime in September, probably for Champions League, and we'll take a look at how we've done and probably get into Champions League action next episode. Hit that like button for me. Subscribe for daily football manager content. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, and I do appreciate that. Take care, guys. Bye.